2023. My name is Ann Thomas. I'm the president of the Diablo Valley chapter. Before we get started today, because this is a group conversation, um, we wanted to have a little bit of an idea about who's here today, um, what kind of technology that they have, and what kinds of things that they might be interested in. So we'd like to ask that you just physically raise your hand so that we get a general idea about um, what the answer might be to these questions. So we'd like you to raise your hand if you suspect you have a hearing loss. So in relationship to this, if you know you have a hearing loss, we don't want you to raise your hand here. This is just, if you think you have a hearing loss, but you haven't found out that you, you have it yet, or you haven't had your hearing tested. You know, a lot of people hang out for a long time thinking, oh, gee, I'm not hearing as well as I thought I could um, before they go ahead and follow up and get their hearing tested. And the second question, which is the one most of us will answer, right, is that you know you have a hearing loss. Okay, so um, has everybody who knows they have a hearing loss raised their hand? Bob Zastro, raise your hand because I know you have a hearing loss and I know you know that. Okay, and do we have any people here today who may be here because they have a family member um, who has a hearing loss? Okay, so then almost everybody here knows they have a hearing loss or they have a family member with a hearing loss. So that's very helpful as the conversation moves forward. We didn't know what the technology level of everybody would be. And this is a slide that was created for a presentation about over-the-counter hearing aids but I also think it could be valuable in guiding our discussion and I have it here. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and, and present the slide. There are basically three different areas that people can have problems with in their hearing. One is their outer ear. The next area can be the middle ear. The outer ear is conductive hearing loss, the outer and the middle ear. Then we have the inner ear, which is the cochlea, which is most people who have age-related hearing loss because that's what is the predominant level of hearing loss. And Claudia, I see you have your hand raised. Do you have a question? So you have to unmute yourself. Sorry, sorry, no, I'm gonna lower my hand. I forgot okay. to do that. Perfect. Okay, perfect, perfect. The inner ear. And then there's some people who have mixed hearing loss, which is inner and middle. And when you have that, you have frequently what's called otosclerosis, which these are tiny little bones in the middle ear. And what happens is they calcify. And so when they calcify, that means they get rigid. And those little bones, when they move, are what push the sound waves into the cochlea. So it's like they progress the sound forward with a push. And so when they calcify, that can't happen. And so sometimes people have um, sensory neuro hearing loss is compounded with otosclerosis and have, so they have a conductive hearing loss as well. We all know that hearing loss is a spectrum disorder. That means that one size doesn't fit all. So it can range from a mild hearing loss, which you can see here with the red line. And this slide was developed for an over-the-counter hearing aid presentation that I gave to the Rossmore Fund in April. And so 70 deci these are frequencies 
This is the volume. So 70 decibels is the borderline between moderate and severe. And so uh, severe, I think that uh, profound starts at like um, 95 or something like that. So the types of hearing instruments that there are, you can have hearing aids, cochlear implants, or bone conductive devices. And hearing aids and cochlear implants are things that you all may be familiar with. You might not be familiar with a bone conductive device, and that is for somebody who has uh, conductive hearing loss, which means that the sound isn't conducted through the middle ear to the inner ear. Frequently that's called by, caused by otosclerosis or potentially a genetic disorder in your middle ear. There's some people here today who don't know me. So I'd like to let you know that um, I found out, found out I was losing my hearing in my late 40s and I had a progressive hearing loss. And today I'm very happy to let all of you know, I have two very, very successful cochlear implants that I got during the pandemic. So now we're gonna open up our group discussion to all of you here to find out what you wanna know and what you wanna talk about today. So this meeting is for you and for your experience of hearing other people's stories, other people's interests. So the first person, please, I'm opening the floor to you because this is your meeting. What would you like to talk about? Somebody has to raise their hand. There we go. Carl Brown, what would you like to talk about? Okay. Um, I'm Carl Brown. I live in Rossmore. And I have some Signia hearing aids. Um, my problem is not so much hearing sounds, but being able to distinguish parts of speech. I mishear words. and Finding hearing aids that help correct this problem, I find extremely difficult. Uh, I got some high-end hearing aids. They're okay. I went to somebody who I'd worked with before. They wanted $3,000 to tune them. Um, is, are there any options available to me? I know I'm driving my wife absolutely <laughs> crazy because I mishear things. I'm missing words. I miss fragments of conversations and hearing is largely a guessing game. So Carl, I would like to ask one question before other people comment. What level of hearing loss do you have? Uh, I would say reasonably mild. So after this meeting, I'm going to send you. Oops, wait a minute. This diagram, and we mm -hmm. use it as a teaching tool in all of our outreach <laughs> events. And I'd like you to take your audiogram that you received. And oh, excuse oh, me. Sorry, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming that you ask for your hearing test after every time you visit the audiologist or hearing health care provider and you have your hearing tested. And if you have not, please do that. So I'll send you this audiogram in a single form, and I want you to mark on this audiogram exactly where the X's and O's are on the one from your provider. And if you have a problem, you can contact me. And C, on the side here, see it says normal, mild, moderate, severe, and profound. Mm -hmm. So you can have an idea then of really where your hearing loss is. What you're describing doesn't sound like a normal situation that someone has with mild hearing loss. What you're saying is something that all of us experience Hearing loss is only measured in the area of speech. Doesn't include anything else. So when you have a hearing dysfunction, when something's happening with your hearing, 
it's affecting what you can understand in speech. I think generally, unless you have profound hearing loss, I think your hearing could be improved. Okay, so I'm going to quit talking and I see Carol Agate. Hi, Carol, how are you? Nice to see you. Um, Carol lives in Boston and we know each other from the HLA convention and from other yeah, communications. Very we've had. Um, do you have something to share with Carl? Well, I, yeah, uh, Carl, I don't know whether you are familiar with oral rehabilitation, oral rehab, it's called. And um, there's somebody here who specializes in that and a lot of members of our chapter go to him. I have not, but um, it um, it deals with word recognition. So whether you go on an ongoing basis and see him regularly or just go for an evaluation, he might be of some help to you if you can find somebody in your area who does oral rehab. I don't know, Anne, do you uh, know about oral rehab in your area? We do not have any people who are really fostering it. So there's LACE online. There are several online oral rehabilitation um, programs. But other than that, we don't have anybody who we could refer someone to. But Carol, thanks for bringing that up. Um, because it's, an, it's a very important component. Um, Carl, I have another question to ask you. In your communication with your wife, and hi, I see her hair on the side of the screen. Hi, welcome. How far away are you trying to communicate to her from? Uh, sometimes just feet away. Okay. Um, and the reason the reason I'm asking that is because if you have over a mild to moderate hearing loss. The effective range of hearing aids is only about six feet. And that really isn't very far. And nobody tells us that it's if you raise your arm and the person you're talking to raises their arm, that's about six feet. So generally, if you're outside of that range, it can make it difficult. So here I see you have your hand up. Uh, yes. So uh, I have uh, a problem with uh with uh, 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 with discrimination, uh, I had uh, I have a conductive hearing loss, but I, it's combined with uh, the inner ear loss, and I had a stapedectomy very recently on my left ear, and uh, my hearing aids, of course, had to be adjusted after that. And now with both hearing aids and the stapedectomy, uh, I can hear very well, but my discrimination in my left ear where I had the stapedectomy is very poor. So I'd be really interested in oral rehab because I really need help in uh, discrimination. Uh, I, I cannot tell the difference between, uh, you know, the, the, uh, between consonants. Consonants are really hard for me uh, to, uh, to distinguish. Zohair, have you asked your doctor about um, prescribing that you have oral rehabilitation with a specialist? Because my understanding is that if your physician recommends it, that Medicare will pay for it. Uh, no, I have not. But uh, that is uh, something I'm going to do very soon. Okay, who has, and Carl, uh, you asked a question about um, reprogramming your hearing aids. So, who have you been seeing? Well, I lost my hearing aids a number of years ago, and I went to get them replaced, and I was quoted $8,000. I found that through 
my Medicare supplemental, I could get the cost of those down to 5,000, but I had to go through their program. And the audiologists that they have are okay, but the one I have been going to uh, was extremely good. And uh, he, he closed his business. I've been to a couple of other audiologists and have not been particularly impressed. So Zohair goes, to, we have two audiologists that are members of our chapter. And when we met in person would always come to our meeting. And Zohair happened to choose, he needed a new audiologist. And he went to Eric Breitling, who is in La Mirinda in Lafayette. And Zohair, might you want to talk about your experience? Yes, so he is uh, uh, very helpful. I had a hard time when I got my new hearing aids about oh, uh, two years ago. And I went to him many, many, many times to get them uh, adjusted and, uh, and fine-tuned. And that's one thing I would just recommend for everybody uh, is to have a hearing aid provider or audiologist who either whose offices are either very close to where you live or where you work, because you really have to go to them many times for fine tuning and adjustments uh, until you can hear reasonably well. So Carl, I'd like to share an, exper uh, an experience that I personally had in and around hearing aid pricing. So in my late forties, when I found out I needed hearing aids and then I went to get them, like everybody else, I was shocked at the cost. <laughs> you know, like, you know, jaw dropping shocked, right? And you don't know me, but there are lots of other people who know me and I'm just a proverbially curious person. So I got the first estimate for the cost of hearing aids and I thought, well, you know, Almost everything in the world has more than one price. I wonder how much other people charge for the same thing. So I price checked the same hearing aid in four different um, practices. And I found as much as 500 plus different in price per aid. And at that time, the aids that I was looking at were a mid-range aid because I had mild to moderate hearing loss. And the more progressive your hearing loss it gets, unfortunately, tends to be the aids get more expensive because you want more premium aids. But I'd also, because I've had that experience, that would have been $1,000 less for my hearing aids then. I think you should call around and ask. So you know the the aid that somebody is referring to. Call three, four different practices and see what they charge for that aid. And where the difference comes in is that hearing aids are frequently bundled. And what that means is that there's the price that the aid actually costs, and then there's the price for services. So everybody may generally pay I mean, the hearing aid providers may pay the same price for the instrument, but the price variation between providers is by what they charge you for their services. Yeah, I did find effectively, uh, I went, and you're right, I went to several different providers, the same hearing aid varied by $3,000. Yeah. And I'm not even talking about um, getting it with your senior advantage. I'm just talking about if you didn't have insurance, because generally insurance still doesn't cover um, hearing instruments, uh, hearing aids, 
but just if you didn't have insurance, if you, you know, compared them. Okay, so um, who else, who has the next question? Uh, could uh, Zaire, could you give me the name of your audiologist again? Yeah, do you know what? Email me after this, or okay. if Alan Katsura might put it in the chat. His name is Eric Breitling. And we're not, I'm not recommending him. I haven't used him before. Zohar Chiba has successfully used him and he can talk about his experience. And because of that, we can provide his name for you. So we're here just to provide education, not referral. Okay, so who's next question? Everybody came here because they have a question because it's a group discussion. Carol Agat in Boston. I'm um, Carol, you're mute. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure just what I can ask about it since everybody, nobody else has a question. I will bring up the my bugaboo, which is Bluetooth. Um, actually, it's the interaction of Bluetooth and FM because I use Roger mics for a number of different things. I have different mics for different situations. And the limitations of Bluetooth are very frustrating because I never know what will go with what and what will link with what. But I understand that Roger mics are not Bluetooth, they're FM. So why, when I turn off the Bluetooth, that connects my hearing aids to my uh, computer, does that affect whether I can then link my Roger mics? So I don't know if anybody else is, is that much into the supplementary aids. I just, by the way, discovered this one only a week ago. Um, somebody in my group, uses this captioner and I found out from her that it's just a um, unlinked um, phone. It's a um, cell phone that costs only $150. And if you have an Android phone, you can use live transcribe to get transcriptions. But then, of course, your phone is tied down to that and you can't use it for other things, which is a problem often. Um, so the supplementary phone is helpful. And then I have an iPhone and I and Apple is just not really. What is this? The host is spotlighted. Oh, OK. Would you like to unmute your microphone to speak? Uh, I don't know. Do I want to unmute, unmute my microphone to speak? And um Why? carol you were originally talking and you didn't have your microphone turned on oh, and so that was a message to you to turn your microphone on you can oh. ignore it now okay mm -hmm. uh, uh so you know unfortunately my question is really very situational because i find that um well first place if you have a phone act and you use my phone act are you finding it is very unreliable that it sometimes shuts down the hearing aids that um, it uh, sometimes I have to um, remove it and replace it and just in general, how do you use my phone act? So or do you have a solution to that? Okay, so Carol, I wrote down that you have three different solutions, three different questions. One is about using Roger devices and Bluetooth. One is about speech to text apps. And one is about using my phone app, which is using the microphone on my understanding on your, on your cell phone 
um, to augment speech in general. Did I get your three questions correctly? Uh, yeah, and I'm afraid they're sort of vague. No, I understand. Okay. Yeah. So um, is there anybody else here who uses Roger? Jim, do you have Jim, problems Jim with it? Uh, Zohair, did you ask a question? Yeah, yeah, Jim Jim raised his hand. He does. Oh, okay, Jim. So since you raised your hand, thank you. Can you, um, do you want to talk about using Roger? Well, <clears throat> I have cochlear implant. So I use a Roger on. I'm not sure that's the same device that Carol is talking about. Um, this is one of them. Yeah, yeah, it looks, looks pretty on. much like that. And then um, I find it. So um, I've had, I, I really like it. I use it a lot. But what I, I found is um, um, after connecting and disconnecting it from the uh, little uh, um, port that you uh, use for television, there's a, a little device you hook to your television and the Roger on uh, plugs right into it. Um, I've essentially worn out the connector. And uh, so now my Roger on doesn't doesn't connect easily to um, to the, 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 the cord that you stick in there. So um, that that's become a, a difficulty that I've had. But um, hooking it into your computer or whatever, there's a little cord that they uh, give you that connects with it, and that works pretty well. Um, but the all the connections are fragile, and by using it a lot, uh, connecting it in back and forth, uh, they wear out. And I'm I'm on my second little um, cord. Um, uh, Roger will replace. I mean. Um, uh phonak will replace that which was kind of interesting i i had lost it and i asked for a replacement i asked them to uh if if they'd sell me a replacement um connector cord and they sent the me a whole cord? new system what what is the and, cord? and i took the cord out and had to send the rest of it back to them which was i thought was kind of interesting is this so I'm, I'm not sure if i answered your question or not is this a cable to connect the Roger to the computer? Yes. Yes, it came it came with the kit. When you get your Roger on, there's there's a, a number of different devices in there. And in there is a little cord. Um hold on. I I can go retrieve it and show it to you. Hold on. I'll be Jim, right you keep talking. I think I have one right here. Oh, okay. Anyway, yeah, that, that cord plugs into the Roger and then the end uh, is a phone jack that plugs into your computer. And so uh, by using that, um, you can, um, I used to be, I used to use Roger on for these meetings, but since I've had difficulty with that connector, I'm, I'm now using a uh, uh, neck loop, which um, doesn't work quite as well, but it, it, it's sufficient. So, Carol, one end of it is a USB port. Yeah. The other end plugs into, do you have Roger on or Roger in or Roger pen? Roger on. Oh, you said that earlier. But, okay. So this is a USB-C. Yeah. See? And it plugs into the bottom of the... Um, Roger on, plugs into the bottom, and you could plug it into your computer. You know, this, now, I have another question. Do you have one, Bluetooth hearing aids? What kind of hearing instruments do you have? Well, right now I am struggling because I sent my hearing aids back to Phonak. I had Lumity. Uh, now I'm back to using my Marvel. My Lumity works with a computer automatically. I don't have to plug anything in. I just set the computer to Bluetooth. It is not, the computer is not connecting uh, to my Marvel hearing aids. And you've reminded me of that cord, which I haven't been using because I've been using the Lumity. 
So now I'm going to try uh, plugging it in so I can use it when I'm on Zoom. Um, okay. So Carol, what I'm hearing right now is that you have the most current hearing aid that has gone to the manufacturer for repair. And both, and you're using the hearing aid that you had before that, and right. but both of those hearing instruments are Bluetooth capable, correct? Right, except, okay. except that they're not working the same way. Yeah, so I have a suggestion for you. It's my understanding that there are a limited number of Bluetooth devices that can actually be connected at one time. Right. So I'm wondering if you have used up, uh, oh, Jim, I see that. I'm going to come back in a minute um, okay. to your, I'm wondering if you have some of those slots set up for the Lumini. So the marble can't take that place. This is my problem there. Understanding the slots. I mean, I realize I can use only two at the same time. But why can I use it with my Lumity and I cannot use it with the um, with the marble? Okay, so maybe, you have to be... unpair the Lumini and pair the marble to the app. How do you unpair something? Well, all right, on the computer. No, no, I... it's fine. So you have an iPhone, correct? Right. Okay. So you go to the Bluetooth connection. You read what devices are connected to Bluetooth on your phone. When you find the one that's Lumini at the moment, click on it. And when you click on it, another window opens up and one of the options is disconnect. The phone isn't involved in this. This is between the hearing aids and the computer. Okay, so on your computer, it yeah. can be the I, same I thing. I realized after I said that, yes, there is a way to disconnect it from the computer. Yeah, There's so you're no, deleting. I have not found out whether there is a way to tell what your hearing aids are connected to. How many devices are on the hearing aids? For example, I walked out today and I got the blip, 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 blip when you get out of range. I have no idea what's in range. What can you do to see on the hearing aids? In other words, my computer has a list of connections. My iPhone has a list of connections. There's no list of what my hearing aids are connected to. Yeah, there are. So on your, what they're connected to is to the device. So when you look in the Bluetooth list on your phone, you're seeing what's connected there. When you look at the Bluetooth list on your computer, you're seeing what's connected there. Now, how many connections you can have are in the directions for your device. And I can help you with that later, figure that out, because different devices have different numbers. So you can be connected to multiple devices, but you can't use more than one device at a time. And how does that fit in with the Roger devices, which are not Bluetooth? Well, yeah, no, they're they're connected through, um, let me see, how's the mic? So when you look at your app, when Roger is on, and it's paired to your device, you should have um, a program for Roger. Do you have that? When the Roger is on, are you talking about the Roger on or? Yeah, the... sorry. It's hard, right? When you have, let's, let's, ch I'll change it. When you have the Roger activated. Yeah. If you open the app on your phone you should see that you have a Roger on program. All right. I've got the, my Roger mic and, and um, my phone app are the two different apps. Which app are you talking about? So that's right. On mine, 
I have two different apps too. And on the Phonak app, it just gives you additional settings that you may choose to activate or not activate for the on. Most people, or a lot of people, the options in the Phonak app for the on are too complicated for them to really utilize. So if you use the app for um, the on in the um, oh, you don't have a CI, right? No, you only, you only have you have hearing both hearing aids, right? Right. Okay, so then you only have the Phonak app, correct? Um, I only have a Phonak app only as opposed to what? Oh, um, see, I have two apps. I have the yeah. Cochlear, I have uh, the a Advanced Bionics app, and I also have the Phonak app. So that's, con that's I confused that, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, my two Okay, so in your Phonak app, the place that I could see that could be problematic yeah. is, is the Phonak app currently connected and set up for your, your Luminity, or is it set up for your Marvel? Um, I, I don't have... I haven't done anything about connecting the app to the Marvel because it's only for a week and I don't know what I would need it for. But what I would like it for is the computer. Like right now, my computer can be heard by anybody who walks by my door. Yeah, uh, so to the, the, sound the, the, the piece you need to understand here is, and it's for all of us, doesn't matter where we are. This is a wonderful piece that you're a question you're bringing up here when you have an app on your phone that app is paired for it to work the app is paired to something so you said that you had the lumine and it was working great and so i'm making an assumption that you had it paired to the Phonak app. So when it's paired and connected to the Phonak app, that means it's giving you the programs for that hearing aid, those models of hearing aids. If you start wearing a previous version of those models of hearing aids, the app on your phone more than likely is not paired to them. So you have to delete the app to the Lumity and then reconnect it to the Marvel. Does that make sense? Um, well, I do have books on my phone. I am able to link the book to the Marvel hearing aids. In other words, I'm now able to listen to the book, which is why I can't understand why I cannot listen to the computer. All right, so is what you're saying that you can hear audio from your cell phone in your Marvel hearing aids? Right. Okay. So if you can hear the audio in your cell phone to your hearing aids, which are now currently the Marvels, that means that the Marvel is paired to the Bluetooth on your phone. Right. And if okay. I go to the Bluetooth on the computer and I can touch on connect, which will connect me to Luminis, it will not commute connect to the marble. Okay. So do you know how to pair with your marble? Um, well, when I pair, 
Oh, you mean open the battery door and close it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And so, that. so what happens when you do that with your computer? Won't connect. I do it and I lay it right down on the computer, and uh, won't connect. And what kind of computer do you have? MacBook Pro. Okay. So after this meeting, let's connect, and we'll see. Um, if we can get that to work. Great. Because I have a MacBook Pro. I'm I'm proficient in both uh, Mac and Windows. So we can take care of that. So, but you're not alone here. This piece about what's paired to what, what isn't paired is very confusing. That, that's what I wish Phonak did a better job of putting out instructional materials. Well, so they do have videos. Um, the piece that made things complicated for you is because, see, you're using extra complicated. You're using two different devices. Using different devices, right. Right. And so sometimes what you have to do is you have to unpair another device, meaning you need to delete it so that it will recognize the new one. Well, it depends on the device. I use table mics very often, and they are gears. All I do is turn them on, and they're connected, always. Then I go to the Roger on, and it won't connect. And so I'll, I'll talk about this with you afterwards, and we'll see if we can find out what the problem is. Yep. Okay. I'm thinking, because I have had this problem, too, that it is, you've got a device. I'm th wondering if you have your device, the device can't tell, your on can't tell whether you're connecting to Lumini or to Marvel and it gets confused. Yeah. So until you get your Lumini back, you could delete your Lumini and then you're at least finding out, okay, if the Lumini is not there, does it find the Marvel? Well, there I had to have the technician at the, audiology office connect the on to the marvel when i brought in the hearing aids to return so he did connect them and yet the on is still not working with the marvel yeah so have you restarted your phone since you recently i have not had a phone call since i put the marvels on i just have my fingers crossed that i'm not without a phone for a week yeah, no, if you change stuff like that, you really need to restart your phone. Yeah, well, I do that weekly because InnoCaption said that you have to restart it every week. I don't know, have you ever heard that from, do you use InnoCaption? No. And you haven't had problems with it. Huh. Nothing out of the ordinary. Yeah. Okay, so we, so we've, talked about this problem of Roger, the difference between connecting, hearing assistive technology to your phone, to your uh, computer, and Jim Schroeder decided to work around that, and Jim is connecting his to something different than what I'm connecting. So Jim, can you show, can you show the cable that you're using? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm the, the the cable that I have is a little different. Let's see here, a little different than the one you showed, Ann. This one end has got the the USB C connector like yours does, but the other end has a phone jack. So this connects into the uh, the the phone connection of your on your computer. So you just plug that into your computer, and then you use the, um, the Roger that um, will connect um, to your uh, computer. And I use that because um, for the, the, the very reason that um, you stated, it's, it's hard if you have a, a Bluetooth connection to, say, your phone, to connect. Uh, disconnected from your phone and reconnected to your computer is really kind of um, labor, uh, labor intensive, because you actually have to uh, 
um, uh, forget. You have to go into your phone and forget the connection on your phone before it will reconnect to your computer. And then, so then you've got to repair them each time. And that's, um, I don't like to have to do that. So I just have my, my, uh, my CI connected to my phone and that stays connected all the time, um, whether I'm using it or not. I mean, uh, obviously it disconnects when you're not using it, but the, uh, um, the pairing is still there. Um, so anyway, uh, I use this connector and it works pretty well. Uh, it's just that after a while, uh, this part, let's see, can't see myself. I don't, um, this part here, the phone jack, uh, it wears out. And then it, 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 you've got to wiggle it to, to make it connect. And so uh, apparently uh, I've looked around. I can't find these connectors anywhere. Uh, the only place they can get them is from Phonak. And they will replace it. But um, like I said, they sent me a whole new kit. And I took the connector out and sent the thing back to them. They're perfectly fine with that. Why they can't just send you a new uh, cable, I don't, I don't understand. But they have their procedures, and they're kind of weird that way. Anyway, that, that's all I really had to say about that. Jim, have you ever, so you don't have, so you have a USB-C that plugs into here. Have you ever tried to plug in the regular USB to your computer to see if you notice a difference between that and plugging it in the audio port? No, I don't think I've ever tried to do that. Um, so I have both. I'm going to try that after we get off and I'll let people know if I notice anything and maybe Jim we can connect about that. I think that's a I think that's really an interesting project. Okay. Okay, so Carol, they did that. We talked about you mentioned speech to text apps. Um well, I was just showing you this because I just discovered it a week ago and it's been fabulous. This okay. is wonderful backup for meetings. So if anyone is interested. Um, so people who are members of the DD Harry. chapter are very familiar with speech to text apps because I was one of the people who was one of the first people with Ava. And Ava is still my favorite speech to text app. It is the most robust of all of the apps. And the reason it is the most robust is it is the only one that I'm familiar with that you can actually have a conversation with different people and each person who's talking is identified in the app. And how I'll explain that is I have Ava on my app, on my phone. Carol, you have Ava on your phone. We connect to an Ava conversation, and you can do it today very easily with, if you're in person, you just lay the phones on top of each other, and it has a QR code. Then within the conversation, you have a profile. I have a profile. When you talk, it shows up in one color, just like the new Enocaption feature. And when I talk, it shows up in something else. So this was especially valuable during the pandemic when you had to have six feet apart from each other. So the importance of the speech to text apps is the closer you are to the microphone, the more accurate it is. And I like to remind everybody the microphones are on the bottom of your phone and the tendency is to hold your phone like this. So you're covering up the microphones. So rotate the phone so the microphones are on the top and you can cock it out to the person who you want to speak with. So that's my favorite of them. It works on your computer. It works um, as a floating screen on your 
phone now as well. So it can be floating around there and anytime you want it, you just touch it. Okay. I used, so, I used it yesterday in a restaurant and I kept getting words from the adjacent table. Yeah. Piece of their conversation would so, so you can plug a microphone, a special microphone, into your phone and hand that microphone at, at a restaurant to the person who you'd like to understand talking. Or if it were Ava, they would just connect on their phone. Hmm. Okay, so the next person I think is Carl Brown. Did you have um, another question, oh, comment, first, Carl? First, I want to make a comment on Bluetooth. If you if all of your devices are not the latest version or version five or better, there is a limitation of seven devices, and often each hearing aid will be a separate connection. Uh, that's just for your information which sort of confirms what you were saying about the limitation of Bluetooth. Uh, the, what I'm wondering about is insurance yes, for loss of hearing aids. I lost one the other day, went all over uh, looking for it. Eventually what I did was turning the one I had off and using Bluetooth to at least find that it was somewhere in the area. Mm -hmm. I have, so if it would pair, show that it paired, I knew I was somewhere close to it. And as it turned out, I still had trouble. It was about a 30 foot circle. And uh, I talked to one of the security guards who had some nice young eyes and found it, but I was really lucky. Uh, it has brought up the concern of insurance for hearing loss, uh, aid loss, of uh, loss of hearing aids. Uh, and other, I've also found out that there are Bluetooth apps that will sh actually show you the direction that the Bluetooth signal is coming from. Anybody Does anybody know about tips. insurance for for hearing aid loss? There are there are hearing instrument hearing aid insurance companies. You can go ahead and Google them. A uh, piece that you might want to do is for your insurance that you have for your house, your car, or whatever. Ask if you can have a writer. Good idea. Okay, thank you. Uh, Claudia, hi, good morning. Hi, good to see you. <clears throat> and great, great conversation here. Yes, using and interfacing with all of these different technologies is uh, quite challenging. But I just want to make a comment following up on what Jim was saying about having to pair and unpair. Um, I'm using the Bluetooth. I'm not having that problem. I'm using the Bluetooth on the computer to understand this Zoom call, and it's going straight into my hearing aids. I have my iPhone right next to me here, and it's also on Bluetooth uh, connecting to my hearing aids, and I, it, there's no problem. It's not unpairing or disconnecting. I don't know what would happen if the phone rings, whether that would uh, screw something up, but so far I have it paired to my iPhone and to the computer at the same time. So who knows? Maybe every person's setup is, and situation is different. So unfortunately, everybody's situation tends to be different because we have different instruments. And I'm delighted that what you have going on right now is working for you um, without confusion. And I believe that in your Bluetooth connections, if you have it connected to your phone, that the a phone call always takes precedent. Now, uh -huh. do you have your hearing aids connected to your phone audio as well as for phone calls? Um, I'm not sure I understand that question. Um, 
Okay, so when you're using the Bluetooth to connect to your instrument and you yeah. get a phone call and you answer it and goes right to the middle of your head, yeah. that's that you have your hearing, and I know you have a hearing aid, hearing aid connected to the phone call capability of your smartphone. Yes. You can also have your hearing aid connected to other audio on your cell phone. So let's say you wanted to hear, listen to music. Let's say you wanted to um, listen to an audio book, any other audio, a YouTube video you wanted to hear the audio. It's a setting within your phone to allow that to happen. Yes. So you have um, to turn that on. I don't remember ever turning it on, but if I listen to an audio book, I guess it comes through Bluetooth. If I listen to music on Spotify, it comes on your phone, Bluetooth, on my phone. Oh, perfect. So, then it's on. Yeah. Yeah. Then it's okay. on. Yeah. That's I wonderful. Think the Bluetooth is the greatest invention. That's been for me a huge game changer. And Perfect. I don't need a separate device to plug into the computer or anything like that. Um, yeah. Kathy Rothschild, hi. <laughs> hi. Um, let me myself. Okay. Um, hold on. I have, I'm talking to two things. I have my phone and my um, okay. Now you can hear me. I'm using my phone. I'm sorry. Earlier, my video was showing, and I was walking from the car back to my place, so you might have seen funny things. Um, what Claudia was just saying, um, I. I'm using my phone right now because it's going right to my ears. I'm on Zoom on my phone and I'm on Zoom on my MacBook Pro. Is she is she on a Mac, is she on a computer right now, a laptop? Because it looked like she didn't look like she was calling from her iPhone. Yeah. No. So Kathy, the answer to your question is you can pay if you can pair your hearing aids to your phone, you can pair your hearing aids to your computer. And so you don't need to use the phone to listen to the audio. Well, you I usually hear... don't. I was in a rush, but I usually use, I usually can hear it from my computer, but if I want to hear really well, I have a streamer um, that goes with my resound hearing aid in my cochlear implant that I plug into the side of my, um, plug in um, to my phone and to the side of my laptop. Now you're saying there's a way to directly pair. Well, so you can, rather than plugging into your phone, you can plug it into your laptop. That's what I do, but it's using the ReSound app or the Cochlear Implant app on my iPhone to work. Can you say that again? So Kathy, because you have, for everybody here, so because she has the mini mic, I happen to know that she has a Cochlear Americas implant. So do I. Right? Okay, so that's a Cochlear Americas implant, and you have resound hearing aids? Correct. Okay. And rather than directly connecting to your computer, you have been directly connecting to your cell phone and listening to audio through the cell phone. Is that what you're saying? Yes. With Normally, I don't call into the Zoom meeting on my cell phone. Normally, I just um, get it from my laptop. Today's unusual. But um, So am, are we hearing that today it didn't work? I'm not sure what no, the question no, is. I was, no. just I was rushing back from somewhere. Normally, I, I can actually hear the laptop without using anything. It's loud enough, but I wanted to hear extra clear today. Um, but you're saying rather than use this for my laptop, I could be pairing my hearing aids right to my Mac. Well, 
See, I think you need the mini mic to do that. Yes. Right. And so you would pair the mini mic. You know what? I'll look into that for you. Okay. You, you know everything, Anne. You're amazing. Um, well, it's only because I was born with a question mark on my forehead. And so you ask a question like right now and... All of a sudden, I realized, well, maybe I, maybe I'm, I don't know about that. So then I go and look it up. Okay, that's how then I the, find um, this stuff. Out. The other question was with Ava. I've been using Otter, Otter, because someone really recommended that in my um, Redwood City uh, chapter that I used to be in. Um, the problem is, I can't. I need this cochlear implant when I go to places, especially loud places. I mean, I, I mean, I need the streamer, not cochlear implant. I need the streamer wherever I go and hold it up to people to hear. And someone said that's wrong. I shouldn't be dependent on that. So I have an appointment this week to get a new mapping to see if there's something wrong that I'm so dependent on this. But I was using it with Otter and I can't with Otter, which is like Ava, you cannot use both at the same time. If I use Otter, I can't use the streamer. Is that true with Ava, do you think? So I had a similar situation recently, and I don't have the same devices that you have. And I need to investigate that for myself. And so at the same time, I'll investigate it for you. So I had the experience of, the microphone, my microphones on my implants got turned down when I was using Ava, which is what you're talking about. And I think there may be a way to turn that off. And so I know all of them as well. So that's definitely going to be one of my, if it's not absolutely there, one of my suggestions with them. Um a way for us to be able to do that. Now, this place is generally when I need to use a speech to text app, it's in a place where I can't understand. And so I'm opting to use speech to text rather than not understanding audio. And I don't have that very often. Um, it's, it's, we live uncertain lives, you know, we never know when we're going to understand and when we aren't. But I will check into this part for you about um, that when you use the speech to text app, the microphones for your instruments are turned off. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, also, with, with Ava, with Otter, you get like only an hour free and then you have to buy time, pay so much a month. Is Ava the same thing? Well, so so Otter, when they came out, Otter offered this huge amount of time. And actually it's quite amusing because what happened is they found it wasn't sustainable. So Otter has really revised the amount of um, free uh, speech to text you can have. And Ava's, you have more per month, but that's limited to 40 minutes at a time for free. So if you're in a conversation that 40 minutes expires, you just restart it. Or you purchase the, what is it? $10 a month now or something like that for the pro plan. Mm -hmm. So the reality is, you know, unless you're a government agency and you're getting money from the government, which is what all of the telephone uh, captioning apps do, you have to make money to survive. So they have to charge. So Kathy, was there anything else that you- No, you, that's you, it. Thank you. Uh -huh. Jim Schroeder, I think you're next. Okay, I have a, 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 a different question, sort of a different subject. So I, I'm- if you want to switch gears or not, you can choose not to answer this. But my question is really related to ADA and, and uh, self-advocacy. And it relates to, uh, um, I, I'm aware that, you know, the, uh, the uh, 
ADA uh, titles, different titles, all government agencies and government meetings and things are, are uh, required and they have to have assisting listening systems for you to use. But my question is, what about other other groups, who who is really required to have a uh, assisted living uh, listening system? For example, the the local PTA or um, your uh, different uh, uh, service groups like uh, the Rotary Club or or somebody like that. Are any of those groups actually required to uh, provide assistance to, uh, listening systems? So for those of you who don't know, um, I also sit on uh, the National HLAA Get in the Hearing Loop Committee, and I'm very knowledgeable about the ADA. And we actually published this Get in the Hearing Loop Guide and Handbook and in the back of the guide, and I'm really proud of this, right? It, it's the silver lining of my hearing loss. I mean, that I helped produce this, and it's really very extensive. So, Jim, in all in the back here, and it's online on the HLA website. We have everything that you could ever want to know about the ADA. So here's all the titles, here's everything else. Um, in a nutshell, so this is where you could look for the resources. In a nutshell, there are four major titles of the ADA. Employment, state and city government, um, local um, entities like hotels and everything like that, and then a miscellaneous category. The ADA in regards to hearing loss says that we need to have equal understanding as everybody else and that they are to provide auxiliary aids and services to accomplish that. If they are using a public address system, then they're required to provide an assistive listening system. Okay. So if they're using a PO oh, and in 2010, they, there, there are actually two parts of the ADA. There's actually the law, which is the ADA itself. But most of the time, people don't really refer to the ADA. They refer to what's called the ADA standards and that's the interpretation of what the law actually does. And the department, um, the, the access board is the one that revises that all the time. And the last re major revision was in 2010. And with that revision, there was a change, a major change in when they were required to provide an assistive listening system. And it used to also include the number of seats used to include whether it was permanently installed. That's not true any longer. So any meeting that you go to, that they're using a public address system, they're required to have an assistive listening system. Now, we all know that most places are not following that law and it's our job to ask for communication access all the time. And if it's not about how well you hear on your best day and in the best situation, it's about how well you hear under the worst circumstances. Because if <laughs> you're thinking about your best day and it's not your best day and it's everything, the worst thing that you can think of and you haven't asked for accommodations, then you get there and it's too late to get them. So Jim and the PTA, they meet regularly, correct? I, I assume so. I, oh, I just so threw that you're out not wanting example. to attend a PTA. Oh, excuse me. Are you wanting to attend a PTA meeting? Uh, no, I, I just kind of that just kind of 
pull out of the top of my head is an example of some some um, is back when I had small children. Uh, my sense was PTAs were were really just a, a group of people that had kind of thrown things together and they were making it up as they go along. And uh, so I would think that that would be a group that would be least capable of providing uh, some sort of assistant listening system um, without a whole lot of guidance. Yeah, anyway, so uh, I, I so, have no, I'm not planning to attend a PTA. Yeah. So my experience is that most PTA meetings are held in schools. Yeah. So you have to have some place to hold it, right? Are held right. in schools. The sc right. And they're held in schools and schools already have PTAs. I mean, already have um, public address systems. So they use the public address system in the meeting location in the school. They're right. required to provide assistive listening systems. Yeah, but they typically don't. Actually. So you need to ask. Right. And we need to be really direct. I have a yeah. disability. The disability is hearing loss. I need communication access to participate. What do you have? What do you have? Start there. And if it's generally it could be a place like deer in the headlights, duh, what's that, right? And it's over and over again. We had an experience this year that, gosh, I think it was seven years ago, we extensively advocated with the Lafayette Community Foundation for their yearly event. Um, it's a senior aging event. They weren't providing any accommodations to anybody. Um, got them to provide captions. They were providing captions every year after that. The pandemic happened. We didn't participate that one year. And then I was on their committee for a while. We didn't participate. And we participated this year and they had the event with no captions. Over and over again, keep doing the same thing. Does that answer that question? Yeah, I was mostly and thanks for bringing it up for him to talk about one of your favorite subjects. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. OK, we're 1124. We just have a few more minutes um, left in our meeting. I'd like to thank everybody, first of all, for bringing wonderful questions and comments and having such great discussion. And there are multiple formats that we can have to do this meeting. Other chapters do what's called hope. And in hope, everybody talks at the beginning and you can't make any comment. And then uh, the last half, you can make comments about your experience or something that you know that may help somebody. We were hoping to maybe be able to do kind of a mix between them. Um, and if you liked this format, we would we would really appreciate it if you would give us feedback. If you didn't particularly like it, that's okay too, because we want our um, peer mentoring and support to be better. We want it to be as good as it can be. We have a couple of um, uh, announcements. The first thing that we want everybody to know is that we have a YouTube channel of all of our previous meetings that we have had. If you have missed one, if you would like to refresh yourself on something that we um, caught, that we um, had a presentation about, please visit our YouTube channel. Also, this was um, the plug for the ADA that Jim so kindly um, asked the question about. And my common saying is that communication access helps people with hearing loss the same way that ramps help people with mobility issues. And if you're talking to other people, they seem to understand that, that concept, which they don't generally understand um, what communication access is and the value of it. Where? Here, you can tell by the icons, everywhere. We're always looking for committee members. Um, Zohar Chiba is the chair for our programs committee. And the programs committee meets once a month to develop programs for the upcoming year. And our year is ending in December. And so we're looking for some new ideas and things for 2024. Hard to imagine it's 2024. 
And I'm a dyed in the wool activist, and I'm always looking for anybody who may be interested in helping me advocate for new and better things in our community. Um, Alan Kutzer and I have had an experience this week where one of our chapter members fell and broke their hip, had surgery, ended up going to acute care for rehab, and opened up a whole new door of how we need assistance, how we don't need assistance. We've spent a lot of time there to try and help this person. Um, you'll be seeing some things come out of that list that we need to have. We don't really think about what happens if something happened to us. You were in an accident, your hearing instrument falls off, gets lost. How could you hear? You're in the facility, your hearing instruments keep falling off because you're laying down. How do you communicate with the people? It's been really eye-opening. We'd be remiss if we didn't remind everybody that we are a membership organization. And please join us. You're free to um, participate in our meetings because we're open to the public. But we'd like it if you wanted to be a member. You can do that on our website. You see the link that says membership, just click on that and it should look like this. And we now, I think, even have a QR code. You can just scan it. Our meetings are the first Saturday of the month. Next month, we are working to having a hybrid meeting, again, or in person. And it's going to be a really special meeting. And Claudia, you're going to love this because hopefully we're going to have you in May to inaugurate your new book that's coming out. Um, Gail Hannon is going to be giving us, and I think I skipped her slide. Hang on a minute. Where is that? Ah, here it is. The upcoming events. So Gail Hannon and um, Sherry Eberts co-authored a book, Here and Beyond, Live Skillfully with Hearing Loss. And the, Gail was supposed to come last year and she was ill in December and had to cancel. And the December meeting is one that never works for Sherry Ebert. So we're going to be fortunate to have Gail. And if you have never heard Gail give a presentation, you're in for a real treat. So everybody, please put that on your agenda. And we're one minute away from the bewitching hour of we try to keep our meetings to 1130. And we're one minute away. And so... If anybody, this is a, you have one minute to, is there anything that somebody news or something special that somebody wants to contribute to make sure that we're all aware of it? When is Gail's meeting? Sorry, uh, what month was that? December. December. Uh, which will be our next meeting. And unless we made a mistake, because Alan and I have both made mistakes recently on, on the date. We believe it's December 2nd. Thank you. So I see that there were messages in the chat. I'm going to quit sharing here. Did it, was there any message? Was there anything that I missed? Was there any question that wasn't answered in the chat? Is everybody happy that we had this meeting today like this in this format? So Kathy, I saw you say yes, thanks. Okay, well, Thanksgiving's coming up. It's one of my favorite times of the year. Um, I reflect on all of the wonderful good things that happened in the year since last Thanksgiving. And one year I even had a, a gratitude tree and I had cards that everybody could write down what they were grateful for in the year before. It was really a fun thing to do. I wish you and your families a very happy and fruitful and full Thanksgiving. And I look forward, we look forward to seeing all of you in December for Gail Hannon. Have a nice weekend. And we'd like to thank our captioner today and the state of California with the RCC captions to for providing cap captions.